how to navigate getting onto your bed with a hot cup of tea in your hands. That's a fun time. Let's put me up a little bit. Even higher. Yes! Yes! Hey Boo, it's your girl Blue, coming back to you to talk about all things taboo. I am here today to talk about asexuality in Christianity. As most of you probably know, I am a Christian. If you didn't know that, well, welcome to my world. I tell you what, there is nothing more beautiful than a hot cup of tea on a cold winter's day. Now being a Christian, I didn't actually know that I was asexual until I was 26 years old. The reason for that is that as a young adult uh, growing up in church, we are taught that um, sexual desire, lustful thoughts and things should be not banned, but like it's bad to have those thoughts until you're married. You should save sex for marriage. You should not lust after your male friends or your boyfriend or whoever. Or Excuse me, but girls can go for girls too, but they don't mention that in church, do they? No, they don't. Uh, so I'm just going purely on what the church has said. We can't have these lustful thoughts, we can't um, commit sexual sin or immorality or whatever. You are to save those sorts of things for marriage. So as a young teen and young adult who didn't have sexual desire, I didn't realize that that wasn't normal. I kind of just thought I'm waiting till marriage and therefore I don't have sexual desire. I didn't realize that it was actually normal to have sexual desire and the fact that I didn't have it was abnormal. And as I've touched on in one of my previous videos, I actually mentioned that I thought only guys experienced sexual temptation or desire um, or attraction because I thought that being a woman and we are taught that women are supposed to be the pure, the reserved, the good ones. Um, and, and a lot of focus in church is placed on boys and their struggle with sexual temptation. That I just kind of thought, well obviously I'm a woman and I'm not experiencing sexual temptation because of that. However, now I know that women do actually experience sexual attraction and they experience sexual temptation um, and lustful thoughts and all those sorts of things. And that it's actually quite rare for women to go through life not experiencing that. However, it's not as rare as it is for men to go through life without experiencing sexual attraction. Um, there are far less male asexuals than there are female asexuals, but that doesn't make it any less valid. Now, the conflict in Christianity that asexuality comes to is, I mean, it's all well and good when you're not married, to be asexual because it's kind of the ideal. However, once you're married, you're expected to suddenly be a sexual being and that is where my topic of conversation is going to be centered around today. Back in 2015, when I first discovered that I am asexual, I found a blog by Diana E. Anderson and it is called Asexuality in Christianity, both ideal and reviled. She goes into detail explaining why she believes it is both the best and the worst thing you could possibly be as a Christian. Um, it's actually a really short read and I've put the link in my description, also a link up here, so that you can go read it. It honestly takes you a couple of minutes to read and it is very easy to understand and follow and it actually made me think a lot. And so I'm going to share um, a couple of paragraphs with you which actually, I think, hit the nail on the head. Throughout the purity movement's abstinence-only education and warnings against lustful thoughts and untoward sexual desire, asexuality becomes the goal without it being spoken of as such. Stopping lust is translated as stopping all sexual desire. So not having sexual desire is the highest of all states a purity movement person can reach. This makes asexuality the unspoken ideal. At the same time, the constant discussion of how everyone has sexual desire and sexual desire expressed rightly within marriage is God's ideal, turns asexual persons into outcasts. Asexuality is the ideal up until the point of marriage and then you're somehow freakish. The purity movement both praises and demonizes the asexual person's identity, which makes it the only queer identity that, re that receives such treatment. It's good up until the point when it becomes a problem to be corrected. Diana, your brain just, wow. I read this whole blog post and I honestly just, my mind was blown because that is exactly what I have been thinking and what I was struggling with as a Christian figuring out my identity without having the words to express it. And I'm just so thankful that this blog post was written because it is literally my thoughts jumbled up in my brain somehow 
condensed into words. Yeah, I kind of, as a teen, I used to think that I was better than other people who struggled with sexual temptation because it was so easy for me to not want to have sex or to not want to watch pornography or to not want to, I don't know, get freaky with my partner or anything like that or get freaky with myself. I just didn't want any of that and it never occurred to me that that was just the way I'm made rather than my choices. I honestly thought that sexual desire was a choice and I didn't understand why these other people were so weak and that they couldn't live without sex or without sexual thoughts or actions. Now I know obviously it's not a choice, it is just the way we are made, just like any sexual orientation, it's all about attraction, not action. But I definitely have been taught through Christian upbringing that it is a good thing to save sex for marriage and to be pure. But yes, my struggle comes in talking about marriage and I've been to relationship seminars through churches that have said things like, it's not good to, oh, by the way also, they often put the pressure on the woman, and I'm talking about in church and what I've heard people say, they often put the pressure on the woman to please her husband and that has created a lot of discomfort for me in thinking about marriage and it's made me detest marriage a lot and not want to get married because I've always viewed it as this thing where you are forced to be with someone who wants to have sex with you and in order to continue living that life you have to please that person by having sex with them. Because I'm asexual and I don't want to have sex, that is how I viewed it. I've never viewed it as something that is mutually shared between the two people. I know that others can have a relationship that is mutual but I personally have felt that if I were to ever get married it would be a situation in which I was forced to do something I don't want to do. But guys, that's rape. That is not okay. Even if you're married to the person, you never have to have sex with them. I want to make that very clear, that you can actually have rape within marriage and within a relationship if you do not consent or if you do not feel comfortable doing it. And I honestly think it is very unhealthy for churches to be talking like this and to be telling predominantly women to please their husbands and to not leave him wanting because otherwise he's gonna go and cheat. I'm sorry, um, that's not okay. It's not okay for someone to cheat and it is not okay for someone to force somebody else to have sex with them. There is a lot of teaching within the church that as a young person I just sort of took as fact that is incredibly unhealthy and incredibly dangerous and destructive and needs to be addressed. Um, <laughs> I am very passionate about it. The older I get and the more I contemplate marriage and what marriage means and if I were to ever get married, why would I get married? Because I'm asexual, I don't want to have sex. So my marriage wouldn't be to have sex or to have children because I don't want either of those things. So if I were to get married to someone, why would I do it and what would my life look like? I don't want to settle down, buy a house, have a dog, take my babies to daycare and have coffee with the other mums. That is not the kind of marriage I want. I. I am an adventurer, I don't like settling into one place for too long, I am a musician, I'm a performer, I want to tour the world, I want to be creative, I want to create music, I want to create costumes and makeup and I want to bring smiles to people's faces and I want to change people's lives through my music and I don't want to be restricted to a traditional marriage where you have to settle down and sacrifice those things for your other half. I want to find someone I can share this exciting adventure with who I can adventure with together out there into the big wide world. If I don't find someone who matches my life's goals and dreams, then I don't share my life with that particular person and that's okay. But if I can find someone who has the same kind of goals and passions as me, then that would be super amazing and that's kind of how I view marriage. Never settling down, always having fun and adventuring and just grabbing life by the balls. <laughs> These thoughts of marriage can be whatever you make it also lines up with Sexually, marriage can be what you make it. You can be married to someone and you don't have to have sex with them. Obviously, you have to have these discussions, preferably before you get married to this person, um, as to what they want out of a relationship. If they experience a lot of sexual attraction and desire and want to have sex and potentially couldn't live without it, then that's gonna be a problem and you need to address that immediately. But if you find someone who is just as ambivalent about or repulsed by sex as you, then that's cool. You can get married or just be in a long-term relationship with this person and share your life with them. And you can just cuddle in bed or you can have separate beds, separate bedrooms. You can have your own space. I'm also an introvert who loves my own space and I need that to recharge. And I've often had thoughts about, oh my gosh, when I get married, 
I'm gonna have to share my house, my room, my breathing space with this other person and it's gonna be really suffocating. But why? That's just what most people want. It doesn't have to be what I have. If I want, I could marry someone. We could have maybe our own bed as a couple to cuddle and things, but then maybe we could have a separate bed to go and sleep if we wanna have a separate room, if one of us snores, if one of us needs more space in the bed, if one of us wants to be more alone. Preferably both of us would want alone time and have our own rooms for music creation, reading books, drinking coffee, creating artwork, whatever, so that we actually can get along and enjoy our time together when we have it. Anyway, I'm babbling a lot, but what I'm saying is marriage can be what you make it. It doesn't have to be what the church states. If you are a Christian and you have discovered that you are asexual, this is a discussion that I personally want to have with you. Can you please comment your thoughts on this? Because I am genuinely still searching and still trying to figure out what it means to be a Christian, to follow Jesus, because I genuinely love Jesus with all my heart and all my soul, and I will never, ever, ever give that up for anyone or anything. But how can I be a Christian and be an asexual and potentially enter into a marriage with someone that glorifies God? Because in church, all they talk about is how you glorify God in a marriage is to have sex regularly. I'm like, I'm so sure there's more to it than that, but like, <laughs> that is literally all they teach. And it freaks me out and it makes me feel so alienated because I'm like, well, if that's what marriage is, I don't want it. Like I will walk away from it as much as I possibly can because that is makes me feel uneasy and uncomfortable, but I want to find someone. I want to share my life with someone. I want to have that romantic connection. Why should I be denied that? Why would God give me that desire if that is an ungodly way to be? Like I feel like people in the Christian community would tell me things like, I want the best of both worlds and I can't have everything. Like you can't want to be with someone and then not have sex with them. That's not fair. And it's like, Nah, I don't agree with that. Like, I'm sure there are asexual Christians out there who I could find to be with. We could get married, we could enjoy life together, we could still glorify God, we can serve God together and pursue His goals for our lives without having sex. You know? <laughs> I don't know, it just like, when you put it that simply, it just seems so ridiculous that it would be such a big thing discussed in church. Like, the marriage bed has to constantly be filled with lovemaking in order for your relationship to survive. But like, there is so much more to love and to life than that. In my opinion, as an asexual with the perspective that sex is really not important to me, and I can experience love on a very, very deep emotional and spiritual level, I just think marriage should be so much more than that. Anyway, I know I'm saying the same thing, I'm repeating myself a lot, so let me know in the comments what your thoughts are on this. If you're not a Christian, what are your thoughts? Um, please try and keep it respectful. I understand if you disagree with a lot of things that I'm saying about church and if you have a negative view on church because of the things that I've said or because of other things that you've experienced being in the LGBT, LGBT community or whatever. I know the church has a really bad rap because of certain people in society who have just abused God's name in the name of Christianity and like that's cool you can express your opinion but please try and keep it respectful because I am a Christian and I am a loving person and I hope that you can see that I am not a bad one <laughs> I try to be a good Christian as much as I possibly can just hit me up with your comments let's start that discussion because I think it's really important for us to try and broaden people's horizons and perspectives on what it means to be a Christian in today's world it's been a pleasure guys I hope this has been eye-opening as it was for me and I will see you again next time. Also, very quickly, my eyes. If you like my smoky eye look, this was requested by Elise and I have actually done a tutorial on this look. So just click up here if you wanna see how to do this look for yourself. It is super cheap, super easy. Basically just use whatever products you have um, and use your fingers if you don't have any brushes. That's how I roll, it's nice and easy. Hit it up, get on that buzz. You can look just like me too. I will see you again next time, guys. Thank you so much, bye.